Good afternoon and welcome back to Tech Innovation 2020. The last program for the day will be the Nordic Technology Showcase, Healthcare, Smart Cities and Sustainability, in collaboration with the Nordic Innovation House. Before we start in a few minutes, we'd like to remind everyone to type and submit any questions during the presentation on our Pigeonhole Q&A platform by scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your screen or visiting pigeonhole.at slash techinno2. Following the exciting presentations by our crowd pitching companies on health and personal care and food and nutrition earlier, this next segment will highlight Nordic companies and research groups' innovation technologies in healthcare, smart cities, digitalization, and sustainability. Sami Jaiskalainen, Community Director at Nordic Innovation House Singapore, will give us a brief introduction. Dear Excellencies, friends of Nordics, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sami Jaiskalainen from Nordic Innovation House and it is my great pleasure to warmly welcome you all to our Nordic Technology Showcase and we are very honoured and delighted to be part of Tech Innovation in 2020. Let's have a look at our agenda today. First, we will have a quick introduction about Nordic Innovation House. After that, we are very delighted to have His Excellency Antti Vanska, Ambassador of Finland to Singapore with us today, uh, delivering the welcome remarks. After His Excellency, uh, we have a very insightful panel uh, and probably one of the hottest topics at the moment, uh, which is 5G and how it will change the world. Our panelists are representing the 5G tech and telco giants from the Nordics. So we have people from uh, Nokia, Ericsson and Telenor. Um, after the panel, we will hear 14 different tech solutions from the Nordic tech companies and research groups covering topics from healthcare, smart cities and sustainability. All these companies will present five minutes and you can also post questions to the chat uh, during their presentations. Please remember to indicate to which company your question is for. But let's start then with Nordic Innovation House first, which is essentially a community platform accelerating high quality Nordic tech startups, scale ups, and growth companies that are coming to Singapore. And of course, many of them are in Singapore as a springboard for the Southeast Asian market. Nordic Innovation House is supported by the Nordic Council of Ministers and Nordic Innovation, which is headquartered in Oslo. And I would say that we are very unique collaboration uh, between the Nordic countries. Um, our daily work, I would say, is really industry agnostic, but then we are running these market entry programs in key verticals such as Method Health Tech, which took place in September this year, Smart Cities, which took place in October this year, and then our sustainability and impact program will run in Q1 2021. Our journey actually started from Silicon Valley in 2014, uh, followed by New York and Singapore, Hong Kong and Tokyo, which was opened uh, last summer. So currently we have five uh, locations globally to support Nordic tech startups. And if you find, uh, want to find out more about our activities or how to engage with the Nordic te uh, tech startups in Singapore or in the other locations, please visit our website or then you can contact us directly. And before I let you go, uh, please remember to continue the conversation with all the Nordic tech companies who are seeing today at Nordic Pavilion at Tech Universe. And now it is my great pleasure to hand over the stage to His Excellency Antti Vanska, Ambassador of Finland to Singapore. Thank you for being with us here today and enjoy the Nordic Showcase. Thank you, Sammy. We will now hear a few words from His Excellency Antti Vanska, Ambassador of Finland to Singapore. Your Excellency, please. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this Nordic session at Tech Innovation 2020. I'd like to express my gratitude to the organizers of this great technology marketplace event and for our friendship with IPI and Enterprise Singapore. We have seen many partnerships formed 
in the past years, when our companies have traveled to Singapore to meet potential international partners at Tech Innovation Expo floor. And this year, we will form partnerships through virtual meetings. I believe the capacity to innovate is the foundation of the future. In the Nordic countries, focus on innovation has been not only beneficial, but also outright necessary. We live in an environment where the outside temperature can vary from 30 degrees Celsius to minus 30 degrees during the year. This is one thing forcing us to be creative. Nordic countries have regularly topped the list of the most innovative nations in the world. Technological breakthroughs happen through innovation. In the Nordic region, the tradition of science, engineering, and research and development is strong. We have combined this with, with a high quality education system, a well-functioning public sector, and a vibrant startup environment. However, innovations and technological advances are actually not a goal in them, themselves. Solving the biggest global challenges should be the driving force. For us in the Nordic countries, development of technology-based solutions is a quest for sustainability. There's another thing in the development of new solutions that is far more important than technology. That is the people. The new solutions are useless if they do not contribute to the well-being, quality of life, and living conditions. The guiding line in all innovation efforts should be the same as in the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Leave no one behind. The need for solutions that address common challenges and comply with the sustainable development goals SDGs will grow in the future. In this context, the Nordic region offers an attractive ecosystem and partnership opportunities for developing high quality solutions and presenting these solutions to the global market. The solutions presented in today's session will answer to many SDGs, such as ensuring health lives, and promoting well being for all at all ages, building resilient infrastructure, and promoting inclusive and sustainable in industrialization. The Nordics are deep in tech. One of the Nordic deep tech strongholds is in telecommunications and related services. The panelists in the panel discussion after me come from three of the world's leading telecommunications companies from the Nordics to talk about huge transformation that will be in, enabled by 5G, the next generation in digital communications. After the panel, the presentations of Nordic technologies are examples of our expertise and solutions for smart cities, healthcare, environment, education, and many other sectors. Many of these solutions are digital, but not all. Before I stop, I'd like to emphasize the importance of collaboration. The Nordic countries have worked together towards advanced digitalization, well-connected infrastructure, and inclusive societies. The Nordic countries and our innovation, innovators and companies are keen to cooperate with, Singap with Singaporean, Southeast Asian, and other international partners. Please learn more today and book meetings with the presenting companies and innovators you find interesting. So on behalf of uh, my colleagues, ambassadors of Sweden, Norway, and Iceland to Singapore and for, for myself, I wish you all the most in inspiring session with the Nordics at 
Tech Innovation 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. Next, we have a panel discussion on how 5G will change the world. Before we move on to this segment, we would like to encourage you to submit your questions on the pigeonhole Q&A platform by scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your screen or visiting pigeonhole.at slash techinno2. Some of your queries may be answered directly on the pigeonhole Q&A platform as well. Riku Makela, board member of Nordic Innovation House, will be the moderator for this panel discussion. We'll also invite our three panelists on screen. We have Barbara Noonan, Head of Government and Cities APAC Nokia, Katikeyan Shanmu Ganandam, Head of New Businesses and Enterprise Oceania Southeast Asia India for Ericsson, and Bjorn Tail Sandberg, Senior Vice President, Head of Telenor Research Telenor. Over to you, Riku. Welcome everyone. My name is Riku and I'm the moderator of this panel about Neotime Future and how 5G will change the world. In telecommunications, 5G is the fifth generation technology standard for broadband cellular networks. The main advantage of the new networks is that they will give much higher data speeds and respond much faster than the currently used technologies. In this panel, we have representatives from three Nordic companies. Telenor from Norway is a leading telecommunications service company in the Nordics and five countries in Asia. Ericsson from Sweden and Nokia from Finland are two of the leading global providers of technologies for communication service providers such as Telenor. And from these companies, our esteemed panelists are Barbara from Nokia, Arctic from Ericsson and Björn from Telenor. So let's move to the discussion about the opportunities ahead of us and start with the title of this panel as a question. So how will 5G change the world? And let's start with Kartik. Please share your thoughts first. Great. Thanks for that. Um, and thanks for the introductions as well. Um, I, I, if, if I even start, uh, for example, the COVID situation now, let's take the coronavirus pandemic. Um, we've known the digital transformation for, for years. Um, and a lot of industries have been trying to kind of transform themselves. Um, what has really accelerated that is during the pandemic, it's very um, invisible uh, that a lot of uh, uh, businesses have trans at least tried to transform themselves. And uh, when they do that, they realize there is this need for communication, which is uh, with the 5G, they see a lot of uh, 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 secure security. And also uh, I see that, they, you know, I mean, of course, the industries uh, uh, have seen the speed and reliability from the 5G networks that they've never witnessed before. Um, so to me, 5G is not just another G or uh, just next generation cellular. It is much more than that. Um, and uh, it is definitely for the industries to take one step further in digital transformation. Um, and also I'd like to point out here, um, uh, the 5G is one of the fastest growing mobile technology. It's almost like two times compared to uh, uh, adoption is two times faster compared to 4G or any other previous generation. Um, and also we do see globally that uh, 190 million users are expected by end of 2022 and like almost going to 2.8 billion users by 2025. So that's the global uh, 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 prediction. And uh, you could already probably see that there are 112 line net live networks around the world. Um, yep. Yeah. So, and uh, researchers also estimate that about 35 billion connected devices are going to be there uh, by end of 2030. Um, that means that it's going to put a lot of pressure on the networks and the operators and the industries have to come forward to look at uh, a technology which kind of uh, 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 can address this requirements from a capacity and also from a resilient standpoint. Um, uh, so lastly, um, uh, I, I, I do believe that uh, digital transformation is happening today. Uh, it's not no longer a stretch goal or a, you know, on a five-year roadmap it used to be. Um, so, and, uh, and in fact, uh, COVID 
uh, or the, the pandemic has actually brought forward uh, the the uh, adoption digital adoption by almost like five years now so within like few weeks you could see the transition happening yeah thanks oh thank you Kartik. and big numbers you just shared with us so barbara what would you like to add 5g my goodness it really is changing our world uh, you know, we, we live in a world that is full of buzzwords and, and technological innovations and, and so many of these things. And, and what I'd like to really focus on is let's get the crystal ball out and have a bit of a think. You know, what could our future really look like? What things can change and what already is? And one of the things that strikes me is look at us here today virtually. How many of us were willing to use video that we all had access to for a lot of years to stay connected? Look, I'll put my hand up and be honest and say, not very much, right? Now, I can't imagine not having access to it. And if I think about that in a 5G world, what I think becomes really exciting is, you know, the lower latency, the increased speed, and moving beyond this transactional video kind of experience that we have into emulating something that becomes similar to the in-person um, experience through the use of AI, of augmented reality, of virtual reality. And, you know, these sorts of buzzwords, which were buzzwords, I feel that this crazy year that we've all lived through, which I kind of refer to as the world's gap year, um, you know, it's, we've got an acceleration and two areas that we've particularly seen it in. One, obviously, medical. You know, I mean, that whole sector that was really obviously something that technology could have enabled, it really wasn't moving. And now we're seeing remote diagnosis. Um, I remember a long time ago before I moved to Singapore, working with the Hong Kong University where, and we're talking 20 years ago, where they were starting to do remote teaching um, for surgeons in, in operating theatres. You know, that is something you think about a 5G world and how that is really possible. Um, on a practical side of an example, look at mining, um, where we've got real deployments in Finland with 5G using the autonomous mining. So you've got really highly dangerous activities that need to be done that can now really be done in a much safer way. So to say I'm excited about it, probably a bit of an understatement. And, and I think it really is real. And, and I agree, it's not just another G. It's so much more. Okay, so much more than another G. So Bjorn, how would you describe what's going to happen with 5G? Where are we heading towards? I'd like to um, try to paint a picture of, of 5G by comparing it to, to 4G. I mean, with 4G, we, we do all the things we do now. And, uh, and 4G is a great technology. When we go to 5G, we can, for instance, connect up to a million devices to the internet per square kilometer. And that means that you can have sensors, the internet of things sensors on anything in the physical world, that it makes sense to put sensors on. And all these sensors will generate data, and you can use that data to train AIs to optimize the physical world, right? So, so 5G opens up a, a whole new um, spectrum of opportunity when it comes to digitization. And Melissa, uh, you, you, to, uh, you, you, touched on, um, you touched on healthcare, you touched on remote diagnosis. One of the projects we're running in, in Telenor in, in Norway with the, the Oslo University Hospital is to test out remote ultrasound from ambulances. So if you have a patient who, who is suffering from something and uh, you can start doing the ultrasound diagnosis in the ambulance, have experts at the remote hospital actually look at those images in real time. You can save lives because you can you can you can reach the conclusion as to what the problem is early enough to, to intervene successfully, something that's not possible today. All of this uh, is possible with 5G once the infrastructure is, is in place. 
Okay, highly promising opportunities with all these connectivities of 1 million devices per square kilometer and numbers like that. Hey, Kartik, would you have any examples of things that you have already seen in practice? Because 5G is not there yet everywhere, but companies like yours have done lots of things already with these technologies. So what have you seen? Absolutely. I think uh, before even I cite examples, uh, um, we've also done uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the research firms have uh, also come up with some predictions like, you know, the overall market from a business standpoint, it's going to be digitalization market is going to be like $700 billion. Um, and uh, and also, if you look at it, uh, the, the biggest um, out of uh, the, the 10 sectors that uh, they've done is healthcare. So healthcare comes out to be the first, I mean, the, uh, uh, the biggest in the total addressable market. Um, so if I and the next ones are manufacturing utilities and energy. Um, so if I go down to one which is healthcare, like Bo, uh, Beyond said, uh, uh, we've uh, you know of course of course witnessed remote uh, uh, ambulance, like the connected ambulance, where you do the remote patient monitoring and pretty much everything can be done remotely using the 5G ultra low latencies uh, uh, technologies. Uh, and uh, if I go with some uh, analysts, uh, which they predict in the US, 88% of the healthcare providers are already piloting IoT and 5G for several use cases um, uh, for the remote uh, healthcare purpose. So basically for remote monitoring and all that. And not only that, why they're doing it is because, also because they are expecting like 16% of cost reduction. So it's quite it's quite a lot and, uh, and 5G, even though I talk numbers, but it's again, uh, it's not just about a mere technology. Uh, uh, at the end, it's also going to benefit everyone in the industry, uh, not only from a monetary point of view, but also from a, a, a environmental point of view. I, would, I can take another example where in automotive industry, uh, like we've uh, in fact uh, been testing. I think in the in the Europe, uh, there have been a lot of tests around uh, autom autonomous uh, trucks. So from a logistic standpoint, if you have autonomous drugs, um, uh, uh, what uh, we've seen is that it can help reduce the OPEX uh, by 60%. Because the biggest uh, chunk in the transport sector is the fuel. Uh, fuel, uh, if you have a connected some sort of a transport um, and, uh, and actually one driver can control a kind of a equivalent of 10 trucks uh, using the technology, right? So, um, so what uh, uh, what you get at the end is that it's not only the 60% OPEX reduction, but also the CO2 reduction. Um, so, so uh, we've again seen like 90% reduction in CO2. So it's huge. So from a sustainability standpoint, also the technology helps. And those are some few examples. And also manufacturing, I could say, uh, Ericsson, uh, in fact, were the first ones to also go out and also do. Uh, uh, 5G set it up in our own factories. So the ones that you see pretty much all the manufacturing and factories around the world which are trying to digitalize um, and uh, uh, we are kind of doing this, we are seeing overall globally um, uh, like BMW, Mercedes-Benz, you name anybody uh, in, the, in the automotive sector, they're all converting their factories into digital with 5G and that is where we see a huge potential. Okay, sorry. Uh, so less tables, more wireless data flow in the future. Barbara, uh, what kind of examples come to your mind in addition to what you already mentioned earlier? I think just to add on what I'd mentioned too, I mean, we talked about the mining and, and we heard more about that. The mining is such a classic area because when you, you look at those autonomous vehicles and the fact that they're leased out, the, the uptime, you don't want any downtime with them at all. So you've got the operation um, from operating them in a safer way because it's done autonomously, but being able to keep them really up all the time. So mining is very big. Um, and that's something that we, we at Nokia have done a lot of work and we've been pioneering. I completely agree with the industrial um, examples. That is the manufacturing, the car manufacturers, um, the work that we do in Japan. Um, the, these are all what we're seeing. I think the other piece comes in when we look at public safety and we look at the mission critical applications. So if we look out to the future a little bit more, we've all definitely seen the connected ambulance, the smart ambulance, the work that we do with NIDAR in Dubai. 
uh, where they've been very much looking at, at the trials. Now you look to the 5G world and you see the potential plans coming in for the 5G operated drones and how that can then really alter the way our first responders operate. So I think when I think about public safety, I think about 5G through the enabling of that um, incredibly lower latency, really providing augmented reality information because it's about situational awareness. You know, you, we've got first responders out there keeping us safe. We need technology that keeps them safe so that they make better decisions, but they also are safe because uh, they are out dealing with incredible situations. Uh, so they're just a, a few of the examples. I think the final comment I would say is 5G, I think from a use case perspective, what's very different about the implementation here is seeing the role that industry and governments are playing in defining what those future use cases are going to be. And that's probably one of the things that maybe is different in this G from the other Gs that there's a larger um, influence that's coming from, you know, the true end users of this, um, in addition to the critical role that the communication service provider makes. So a, a very interesting time ahead. And, and I think more, more brains that are coming up with more ideas, that's going to be a lot better use cases for all of us as people that live in this world. Okay, thank you. So Björn, uh, let me add an additional question to what I already asked. Uh, what, what would be those examples that come to your mind and then how can 5G change my life mm. outside of work, meaning that does it affect people mm. outside of these work use cases? Yes, uh, obviously 5G is, um, is a technology that <clears throat> is more efficient uh, than 4G. It means that uh, the available data speeds will be, be higher. There will be more uh, capacity to share between people in crowded cities, for instance. So, so you as a, as a consumer will probably experience that uh, where you, there might be lags and delays on 4G, they will not be there with, with 5G. So it's, it's uh, more, then there's more capacity, it's more efficient in that regard. There are also some services that have been touted a lot and, and talked about that we can experience as consumers. For instance, if, you, if you're really into gaming, um, you know that delays in the signals when you push the button to fire your gun or whatever uh, are, are dangerous. You, you, you can die from these delays in the game. Uh, that is much less of a problem with 5G. 5G has much better control over how long the delays are going to be. So the gaming experience can be much better in 5G than in, for instance, 4G. But I'd also like to, to touch very, very briefly on another health use case, which uh, we are excited about. We in internal research, we're working with, uh, again, Oslo University Hospital, who are developing a new type of diagnostic pill. So this is a small pill camera that you swallow, sort of follows your intestines and uh, takes photos and, and video to look for anomalies in your digest digestive system. And with 5G, you can actually get so short delays that the video from this pill can be uploaded to the cloud and an AI can analyze those images in real time and tell the doctor whether to slow down or speed up the camera and get more information about an area that's of interest. So this means for, for a patient that uh, uh, the, the, the discomfort of this type of, of investigation, which is really unpleasant today, is reduced. And the ability of the doctors to actually diagnose you and figure out whether there's something wrong or not is vastly increased. It also means that while you're doing this, you can probably walk around, you're not, linked to a bed or a chair while the examination is going on. So um, reduces costs, improves diagnostics, uh, improves patient, uh, patient welfare. So I don't wish anybody to have to go through this type of, of uh, examination, but uh, if you do, uh, 5G promises it to be less unpleasant. Okay, that was a 
highly interesting example of the opportunities that 5G can enable. Uh, one last question, and actually time only for one answer. So question is that if you were an entrepreneur and innovator now, thinking about what to develop to solve problems of the world, what would be your advice for these types of people, innovators and entrepreneurs? We have many of them in audience today. Let me ask this from Kartik. So what would be your advice about 5G for all innovators of the world? Uh, sure. Uh, I think uh, what we've learned from the previous generations is also this. Um, uh, the network insights are very, very important. Say, for example, you know, the developers can get access to, let's say, the precise location of, let's say, the goods, or the people, uh, like in a crowded place, uh, you could also say, you can point out to the degree, uh, 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 like where the person is. It, 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 so, it, you know, in, in many ways, that could be helpful. Um, and uh, that means that the developers can get access to that. And as an innovator, uh, definitely, in fact, I would say 5G is not just a technology, it's a platform itself. It's an innovation platform. So it opens up doors um, uh, for innovation uh, from opening up the network insights and all, but also uh, with, with uh, you know, you maybe, you know, the technologies, uh, uh, terms like the slicing and also the um, overall exposure APIs. Uh, with those things, we can really uh, come up with, uh, uh, you know, a lot of new applications like the COVID-19 uh, COVID applications. If you look at COVID applications, they are like the number one applications today uh, that's being used. Uh, by lost, you know, by a vast audience, um, and they are all using some sort of a network insight uh, in order to gather uh, uh, information from the people, including the remote uh, uh, diagnostic, and also, you know, uh, 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 like a while uh, from touchless and uh, biometric uh, information. So those those sort of things can be gathered, um, uh, and with most data upload, uh, and there's there's really going to be a need for having a. Uh, 5G sort of uh, technology. Yeah. Okay, so more capacity, more speed, less latency, so many new opportunities for all the innovators and entrepreneurs. So let's move full speed ahead and all of you three companies, please help us to make the world a better place with your technologies and enable this transformation. Thank you so much for all the panelists and all the audience. Thank you. What a lively and insightful panel discussion from these global network providers. Thank you. The next segment will feature Nordic companies and research groups projects that offer technology partnership opportunities. We will first have Petteri Jonpolvi from Adesante. Hello, my name is Petteri, Petteri Jonpolvi and I am a CEO of a company called Adesante. Here we are going through a digital rehabilitation platform, which is a platform for deploying rehabilitation services to the end customer, to the patients who need these kind of services. Digital rehabilitation platform, DRP, uh, is a cloud-based training, education, and simulation environment. It is a kind of ready-made solution for deploying applications when and where needed. Uh, it is digitalizing uh, rehabilitation, training and simulation services. It provides these services over the cloud, so both could be achieved when needed and where needed. And customer system administrator locally, it could be hospital region, it could be inside the hospital, it could be country level, the system administrator, he or she defines who has access to which kind of rehabilitation exercises, therapies, trainings, courses or simulations. But that's not all. Even though the platform itself is ready-made, it provides an open opportunity for local companies to deploy their applications and technical services through the same platform. So even the third-party applications, like made in Singapore, uh, could be deployed through this one through this platform globally. It also enables uh, new technologies to be taken apart. Here in this picture, in the center, uh, is the digital rehabilitation platform, which is the core product. And above the center line, there are new technologies and solution providers. New technologies and existing technologies like cloud services, virtual reality simulations, 
can be deployed through this platform. But also, like I mentioned already a couple of times, that the new technologies could be taken into use, like 5G technology, extended reality, uh, augmented reality could be, could be deployed through this to the customers who are here below the central digitalization uh, rehabilitation platform. The end customers could have access to all these applications which already exist in the platform or which are deployed by our dear third party companies like uh, Singaporean local companies or Asian or wherever those companies are coming from for providing comprehensive solution to the ones who need it and where needed. Currently we have this nasolaryngiar sampling, hand sanitizing, ICU simulation, uh, surgery training and, and applications ready. But like I mentioned, more could be deployed through this one. So all the technology component, let's say the mandatory basic components are ready to use. They are not any prototypes, but they are tested in the industrial world and they are in use through this platform. So it is having these re ready-made rehabilitation and other services, but like mentioned, new technologies from your side could be added into this and through this single platform could be deployed to the end customer and to the ones who are needing this. These basic components already include instructions to use, tutorial videos, written pre-course materials, if defined so, virtual simulations and several kind of exercises, ready-made exercises. System traces the performance of the user, it gives the feedback, to the supervisor and to the user itself. So it has also this kind of training and development perspective for seeing how things are proceeding and if, for example, instructions are followed carefully or not. It creates a certification in case there is certification defined behind and uh, through cloud services, it keeps all the applications up to date whenever needed and wherever needed. Here is the list of the existing applications. But more to come together with our partners, third party application developers and technology de deployments. Thank you so much for your time. Like mentioned, I'm Petteri, Petteri Joenpolvi, CEO of a company called Adesante. Welcome to visit us. Welcome to contact me directly for requesting more information about uh, digital rehabilitation platform. Thank you. Thank you, Petri. Our next presenter is from Brighter AB. We have Martha and Natasha. Hi, everyone. We are from Brighter, and today we are going to share our data-driven solution in managing chronic condition. We are Brighter, and we are a Swedish-based health tech company. In Brighter, we believe that the managing of chronic condition should no longer be a problem anymore. And that is why we create a solution at the moment in battling one of the global highest case of chronic condition, diabetes. I am pretty sure you have heard about diabetes before, or even some of your family members are battling with diabetes at the moment. Because yes, in Southeast Asia, one out of 12 adults have diabetes. And unfortunately, 37% of them remain undiagnosed. And as we have seen the enormous economic growth in Southeast Asia, we will also see the growth of diabetes. And that is why it is expected that 25 years from now, there will be an increase of 62% of diabetes patients in Southeast Asia to 46 million of sufferers. And the problem of diabetes is not just about the condition itself, but it is actually on the complications that diabetes patients have to probably suffer. As a diabetes patient, you have a higher risk to have a kidney failure and then have to live from dialysis. Or as a diabetes patient, you will have a lesser pain sensation that would probably cause this patient not to even know they probably have a heart problem that will lead them to probably have a heart attack. And that's why based on the research, 90% of the costs that is spent on diabetes is not actually on managing diabetes itself. 
it is actually on the complications that they have to suffer because of the uncontrolled blood glucose. From here, we have seen the real problem and understand the importance of these patients to adhere to their treatment. But how can we do this? Because now in Southeast Asia, most of the patients that send their data with the normal glucometer would only put it on their notebook so that these doctors, healthcare professionals, could only rely on the memories of the patients. And that is why there is a need to actually connect the patients and also the doctor through a data-driven system so that the patients and the doctors will be connected and doctors can make an effective treatment based on the data and not based on just a plain notebook. This is why we created ACTIS, our first solutions for diabetes. It is a one-stop solution in managing diabetes treatment. And now we are available in Sweden and has been CE marked on 2019. We have currently two solutions for both insulin dependent and also non-insulin dependent. So in our device, we combine insulin injections, glucometer testing, and also the Nilprick all-in-one solutions. When the patients take their glucose testing, all this data will be sent seamlessly to the cloud server, and then the healthcare professionals will be able to see this result live anytime and anywhere, because this device will also be connected to the cellular connection and embedded inside the device, so they don't have to rely on Wi-Fi anymore. And also the patient will be able to own their health because all this data will also be sent to the companion application. And in this app, the patient will be able to see the trend of their glucose data and also see how they're doing in adhering to the treatment. And they will have different features and reminders. Through this seamless connection of treatment, we are hoping that we can improve the treatment of diabetes and that's so that the patient will be able to own their life as the diabetes patients continue to have a wonderful quality of life while in the same time adhering to their treatment. And this data that will be collected enormously will help the research and also the doctors to create a better personalized treatment for the patients because every patient is different. As we are now expanding in Southeast Asia and currently available in Sweden, therefore we would like to invite different collaborators that have the same vision such as. It can be telehealth operations, it can be healthcare professional, it can be government, anyone that believes that chronic conditions should no longer be a problem anymore. We would like to invite you to collaborate together with us and also make diabetes no longer a problem anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Our next presenter is Dr. Kari Aho from SECA. Greetings. My name is Dr. Kari Aho. I'm the CEO and co-founder of SECA. Next, we are going to talk about critical communications, alerting, and safety for professionals. Our mission with CCAP is to help to save lives, minimize the impact of crises, and improve security. The big picture behind CCAP is that when we are facing unexpected situations, whether they are emergencies, disasters, or infrastructure failures, it means that the need to able to react within seconds. Failure to do so might lead to loss of lives, or at least to substantial costs not being able to run critical operations. So it boils down to how are you prepared, how fast you can react, and how can you make sure that you reach key individuals day or not. CCAP is a SaaS service for effortless critical communications and alerting that captures your attention when needed. It means the need for uh, efficient emergency response, not forgetting how that reflects to daily operations. It helps to improve the preparedness to crises and incidents beforehand, send critical alerts to individuals and teams, broadcast mass notifications, collect and share critical data in a secured environment, and currently worker safety. CCAP works with any device and it is easy to use and it helps you to save lives and resources. 
CCAP alerting allows you to send and respond to alerts in a matter of seconds, whether that's a small group of people or even the whole organization. It works with any device and any communication technology and can bypass device silence settings and demands instant response. CCAP integrates to other systems as well with ease allowing the combine and automate alerts coming from building monitoring systems, sensors, fire detection systems, as well as physical devices for imp improving building and personal safety. CCAP mobile safety panic buttons and deadman switch will work with smartphones and allow to call for help without any additional devices. Whereas CCAP mobile checklists allow to collect critical data from field operations to safety works and incident reports within minutes. We are now looking for distributor partners and usually a, a few examples from our partners or telecom operators that combine CCAP critical communications and learning with device and subscription sales to their B2B customers. Security company, companies complementing CCAP with security cards and control room services, for instance, and technology partners where our technologies integrate and complement each other. Thank you for your interest and hope you'll connect with us for more details. CCAP is already now trusted by more than 90,000 professionals across authorities, public, and private organizations. We are CCAP and we are ready to help you to save lives and keep critical operations up and running with ease. Thank you. Before we move on to the next crowd pitching presentation, we would like to encourage you to submit your questions on the Pigeonhole Q&A platform by scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your screen or visiting pigeonhole.at slash techinno2. Some of your queries may be answered directly on the Pigeonhole Q&A platform as well. Our next presenter is Dr. Mina Pika Rainen from Olo University and VTT Technical Research Centre of Finland. Welcome to, to look at this uh, presentation about the Stroke Data Project, uh, which is related to stroke uh, prevention and diagnostics. And my name is Minna Pikkarainen. I'm Professor of Connected Health from Oulu University and VTT Technical Research Centre of Finland. And this is a story. Uh, this is a person called Matti and he's uh, living in a big city and uh, he's living there with his wife and he's pretty happy with his life. But then one day something happens to him. Actually, he doesn't feel very well and his uh, speaking sounds very weird and also he looks very weird and his wife is very worried and calls uh, immediately the ambulance. But when Matti is in the hospital, uh, actually, this uh, doctor has difficulties to diagnose his condition because it's very difficult to explain uh, what actually happened. And uh, so basically, this is a TIA case, uh, like uh, this kind of condition that can happen before the actual stroke. And it takes from 10 minutes to, to one hour. And typically, doctor has difficulties to diagnose it because it's difficult to know what actually happened. And this was a starting point for our stroke data project where we started first to discuss with neurologists about this problem. And then we realized that we need to look at uh, the possibilities to use heterogeneous data in stroke uh, diagnostics and, and, uh, and prevention. Uh, basically, we also realized that stroke is really important. Actually, there are 5.5 million people dying every year for stroke. So we need, really need to look at this, this problem. So we created this stroke uh, data project with this kind of consortium from uh, like different companies, uh, different hospitals and research organizations as a goal to co-create solutions to solve these problems. So what solutions then we are actually uh, co-creating here? We are going to make uh, this kind of basin uh, solution for the people who have had a stroke. And then they um, like get this solution into use already at the hospital and then uh, this kind of rehabilitation center and then back home. And the idea is to help them to, to uh, recover after stroke, 
but also to, to help them with this uh, secondary prevention issues. And actually, after that, based on that, we are going to uh, make this solution for the early prevention side of the problem. So, and, and uh, then another uh, solution uh, building here is this kind of professional facing uh, solution, which is for this uh, kind of multidimensional team, uh, like therapists, uh, physiotherapists, uh, doctors, and, and uh, nurses working together to help these uh, stroke patients, and also the solution for the diagnostics itself. And here we use like various analytics and various data sources to make all this happen. And how we work together with this consortium, actually we started at first with the workshops of these uh, kind of end user representatives looking the whole care pathway of the stroke patients. And now we are conducting systematic literature reviews in order to understand what solutions are out there related to these problems and also qualitative interviews to understand what are the real needs of the patients and medical experts. And we have already started to co-create these solutions, creating concepts and mock-ups and also uh, architecture for these. And after that, we are going to do this kind of impact evaluation, uh, feasibility studies, where we are looking what was the actual impact of these solutions to this uh, like quality of life of these people and also for the cost efficiency in this rehabilitation center and hospitals. And we also do data collection pilot where we actually collect data in order to develop these AI solutions for this problem. Cohort study to understand these uh, risk factors related to, to this uh, stroke prevention and some business study in order to help these companies involved in the international market in this uh, stroke area. Thank you. Thank you, Mina. Our next presenter is Marit Weissenen from Bitfactor. Hello, uh, my name is Marit Weissenen. I'm lead service designer from digital agency Bitfactor. And I'm going to tell you new ways about for improved rehabilitation. And I'm giving this presentation on behalf of, of Innocas Medical and Paul Innama. This is a collaboration that we have done together. And if we go to the next sl slide, uh, the goal in this collaboration is to create a solution for better and more efficient rehabilitation after stroke. Uh, this can include uh, applications for patient and expert for seamless, uh, timely interaction. Uh, the solution will also utilize sensors and monitors for better to better understand the physical progression of the, of the patient. Data and AI are also a vital part of the project since they provide uh, ways for more personal rehabilitation planning. Uh, the solution uh, will be uh, created together with the Rehabilitation Center uh, Vetria, uh, Inocos Medical, Bitfactor and Predicel. And also we will work very closely with the users, and this means patients and experts. Uh, they, pro they provide us insights and valuable feedback. Uh, AI is a vital part of the solution backend, and there will also be uh, technical development and testing as well as feasibility evaluation. And in the next slide, uh, I will tell a little bit about the benefits of the solution. So overall, the solution will increase touch points with the patient, and this will increase the quality of, of rehabilitation and furthermore quality of the patient's life. Uh, thanks to application, there will be better patient and expert communication during rehabilitation. And there will be better insights of the rehabilitation activities and activities of daily living. We can talk about better and safer treatments and more data to support decision making. Thank you. Thank you, Marit. Hello, my name is Gunnar Hansen. I'm representing Haltian Empathic Building. Uh, and uh, we are also part of this stroke data uh, program. 
so uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the things we do in, in empathic building is that we really want to, to achieve this, that we need to do more with fewer hands in the future. Uh, there are very many solutions out there uh, and uh, in this stroke data program, we see there are different participants. Uh, and our role in this is to try and bring all these different data sources together into the visualization tool. Uh, we try to do this uh, from home, uh, also in, in health, uh, uh, public health care sectors and also in the hospitals. Um, we have been doing this for many years now already and, um, and uh, I can show you one of those examples in the next slide. Uh, so the picture you see here is uh, Tromsø University Hospital. Uh, on the right hand side you can see the 3D model we have made out of the, the campus site which is 130,000 square meter and we can make these models really fast. Uh, and the model itself is, is a visualization tool which is available, uh, can be available for both the patient and also for the treatment uh, personnel. And uh, we take, uh, we integrate with whatever system uh, or, or sensor input into this, uh, this solution. Next slide. Uh, so just to, to say a bit about what we can do uh, inside the hospital. Uh, this can be like finding free spaces uh, or, or, or know where a patient is. So for instance, if a stroke occurs, where is the patient? We can trigger alarms uh, and, and we can really try and, and combine all these data sources into the same uh, visualization tool. Uh, so uh, we are really looking forward to, to, to make uh, a solution where we bring together all these different fragmented solutions into one uh, and, uh, and uh, enable the clinical personnel to have the same data sources uh, wherever the patient is, is being treated. Thank you. Thank you, Gunnar, for that presentation. Next, from Bitium Biosignals, we have Miko Halanaro. Hello, everybody. My name is Miko Halanaro, and I come from Bitium. Uh, Bitium is a manufacturer of medical devices, for example, for cardiac and neuro purposes. And uh, today, I'm going to tell you a little bit what we have in, in mind for the future in uh, regarding stroke detection and treatment. And uh, Next slide, please. Uh, particularly, I'm going to tell you about one device we have, which is called Brain Status. And the whole idea behind this device is to make EEG measurements a norm, kind of really a routine, routine operation to do. And uh, how to achieve that is uh, making the measurement as easy as possible, and also to make the analysis of the measurement as easy as possible. And uh, if we are going to look at the ER case on the next slide, uh, it means that we can start measuring EEG, for example, already during the ambulance transportation of the patient. And uh, to do this, we have to conquer certain challenges like uh, maintaining the high signal quality in a hard environment and uh, to make a device that actually the ambulance personnel can put on the patient. Easy montage doesn't require an EEG specialist. And uh, being able to transfer the data uh, wirelessly to the hospital so that the EEG spe specialist can actually look at that even before the patient arrives at the, at the hospital. And uh, the purpose of all this is that uh, in some cases, especially any case with brain hypoxia, like stroke, for example, uh, it's very beneficial to start measuring the brain early to get preliminary, uh, early data to make the diagnosis and also to forecast how well the patient is possible and undo. Uh, next slides, please. And uh, 
in terms of ICU, where, where the stroke patients might, en might end up, uh, also there, EEG specialists, they are an expensive and uh, scarce resource. So we need to be able to start the measurement without, without the specialist, if we want to measure most of the patients at the e, uh, ICU. Thinking about it, uh, traditionally in ICU, we, we are measuring heart all the time. We are measuring uh, blood oxygen levels all the time, but we are not measuring brain. And that would be very beneficial to do that as well. And uh, doing this at the ICU also enables doing combining EEG with several other measurement techniques to actually locate a stroke or even to be able to um, separate be between a clot or, or bleeding in, in the brain. And uh, helping to have the uh, remote access to data, you can actually have your specialist in, in another place to do the analysis. So also in remote areas, this is possible. So that's what we have in mind for, for uh, treating and detecting strokes and, and uh, different kind of problems in the brain. Thank you. Thank you, Miko. Our next presenter is Carlos Canto from Basin Corporation. Will you give your password to neighbors or will you share your photos with strangers? Will you live without the internet for a day? If you are speaking about customers, will you share their information with a third party? Or will you have blackouts in their infrastructure? or fail to provide the digital service that you have contractually? Is this answer a no, or any of the answers a no, then we are here to help. We provide digital twins for a mission critical application as a platform. Our objective is to bring commitment to our customers by bringing exponential value generation and deploying the base and cloud technology. We have three business lines the system of systems, the telecom operations, and the business on base send business lines. What does this mean? System of systems, it's a way to consolidate all the data in a secure manner to be able to integrate different OEMs and different technologies to speak with each other in the case that they are not compatible. For example, you might have a smart city project that is utilizing Schneider Electric or AVB or Siemens or any other infrastructure, any other technology that is not compatible. We are able to bring in together a unified experience and user interface for this purpose. The focus is here on an umbrella platform. Our other business line is the telecom operations. As a telecom operator, you need to ensure that your customers are having their service uninterrupted without any blackouts. For this, you need to have routers, firewalls, switches, access points, servers, data centers. All of this is interconnected in such a way that is making the network to work properly. And we are speaking about tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of devices. If we have one of these failing, then we are in a deep problem. So what we do is to monitor and to manage remotely all these elements from an ICT infrastructure perspective. The focus is on ICT monitoring. Then we have the third business line, which is business on base end. Business on base end focuses on co-creation and value generation to our customers. Normally they have needs, they have challenges, and they have limited resources. So we match those two cases with the experience and with the technology of base end. With this, we are able to bring exponential value growth and be in the new business lines, their diversification, potential growth with tailor-made solutions. And as mentioned before, the objective is to have exponential value data generation by deploying the base end cloud technologies. How do we achieve this objective? by focusing on the full stack integration, the experience that Basin has gained since 2001, the year when it started its operations, 
has been able to build in solutions that have helped our customers in such a way that they have improved the value added to their customers, bringing an end-to-end solution by deploying all the knowledge and all the technology needed in order to make them business to work in a much more better way than without the technology. When we are speaking about the systems integration, analytics, correlations, and data enrichment, that is where we put into action all the levels of the stack, from network accessibility to data centers, to computing and storage environment, operating environment, base and platform core, spine containers, APIs, data science, and data analytics. In terms of our customers, we are currently serving more than 80 countries with 16 data centers globally distributed. Areas with global construction site control, smart building and energy, smart living and e-health, data centers, and industrial automations. In terms of the information flow, it's quite straightforward. We get the data from external sources, we process that into the base and platform, we provide with the user interface and unique uh, tailor-made solutions to fulfill the needs of our customers. In 2018, Gartner listed Baysen as one of the main representatives of digital twins. Some of the case examples we have, the Calasatama Smart City projects, smart vessels, grid loss reduction in Rwanda, and as a smart substation, bringing in together with the information with the solution that the customers required. This is my data, my contact details. If you have any questions, just give me one call or send me an email. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. Our next presenter is Maria Taipalin Maki from City Nomadi Limited. Good afternoon. My name is Maria Taipalin Maki. I'm the CEO of City Nomadi. And um, I'm very happy to be here and presenting my company. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, what is City Nomadi? Um, City Nomadi is a company based in Finland, in, in uh, Tampere. And we, what we do, we visualize interactivity and operations on maps. We do have a cloud service. And uh, in, in the cloud service, we combine different kinds of uh, maps uh, to all kinds of uh, information feed. Uh, the maps can be published on info screens, um, on, on iPads, on laptops, on mobile. And um, the more, most important feature for the um, uh, mobile devices is offline use. We cover the seamless uh, location and positioning service indoors and outdoors um, with different kinds of um, uh, technology. We have um, API for data feeds, for open source data, prioritized data source, IoT and sensor data. And our SaaS uh, service is global and it is multilingual. So uh, thanks for the efficient SaaS service we have, we are able to combine both uh, global and local maps on, uh, on, um, uh, for the, our services. Uh, the open data sources can be um, anything general, such as weather and noise detection. Prioritized data can be the data of the stakeholders, which is meant for the uh, certain use only, uh, such as crowd management. IoT feed uh, can be anything, again, we are agnostic to the IoT sensors we use. Through the APIs, we are able to um, uh, filter different kinds of data on a map uh, interface. And here is a snapshot of the craft tool of City Nomadis where our clients are able to insert geo items such as areas, lines, paths and points of interest and create a new wayfinder lines on them. Also you can you can cover different kinds of content in the geo items so it's really interactive. Uh, 
uh, we offer real-time data feed on maps for different purposes. For, for example, for the construction industry uh, to make the processes more efficient, uh, to create checklists for the operations, to provide information for certain user segments, uh, for uh, give out real-time information for, uh, for the users, and most um, importantly, the wayfinding uh, feature in the areas where there, there are no street addresses available. So um, on the global maps, we use local area maps, which can be, uh, for example, event maps, uh, construction area maps, or uh, real estate building maps with uh, different floors. As an example, I will um, uh, uh, present a map during the construction process in the hospital area, where you have a kind of a approaching map for the, for the area with a different kinds of information embedded. And then we step into the buildings uh, where we can have an indoor location, uh, switch floors accordingly, find places according to our interest, uh, use the wayfinding feature. So um, actually um, our service is fully scalable. It's uh, global and uh, it's uh, multilingual. And in the end, I will invite you to download our application just to try out how the end users will benefit from the interactive app maps of ours. So please go to the app.citynomadi.com and follow us on the social media as well. We have a number of new cases going on there. Thank you very much for your time and attention and please Contact me by email. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Our next presenter is Marco Karkainen from Sega City Environment Private Limited. Hello, my name is Marco Karkainen from Saga City Environment. Today, I present to you two very effective innovations from Nordics in Finland. Clean Sweep Clevat Vessel is a new generation vessel which can collect marina debris, harmful vegetation and oil spills. FinBin is a next generation smart waste bin technology it can use in a city urban environment. Clevat Saving the Seas. Clevat is a unique method to collecting why waste, algae, oil spill, and different harmful materials on the lakes, rivers, and oceans. What is different? It's different because it's used natural flow of the water, and it's not harmful like a vegetation. And the next year when the harmful vegetation flows again, it, it's not so big as the previous years. And what is also unique, you can collect in as less small particles, 0.5 millimeters microplastic, which is unique. Nobody else can do it that. What is started 2010, our founder, Mr. Johannes Mullikoski, understand that have to do something after the Mexican Gulf disaster. First thing, what we think about that we can use this vessel for the oil spill. But very fast, we realized that we can use also the microplastic, macroplastic, and different kind of harmful vegetation. 2018, we won a Baltic Ocean project, first prize, and that started like a startup to our company. This year, 2020, we was chosen a 10 most uh, promising growth companies in Finland more than 550 companies participated in this competition. We are working together with the universities worldwide and some NGOs, big companies to, to collect in ocean plastic and also do research work because our vessel can do those small, very tiny particles and then how we can get more information. What we want to find for investor, funders and partners, we need vessels to Asia. We have to collect more 
ocean plastic because every year more than 10 million tons leak to the rivers and to the ocean. So there's plenty of work to do. We want to work together with the universities, NGOs and other partners and create a value chain, all those collective materials. Finbin, it's a next generation smart waste bin technology from Finland as well. What we are looking for is the Asia city urban environment that we can locate it, it's waste bin all the big cities and medium sized and small cities in Asia. It's unique because there's a real time data you can collect in the bin fin level, just time emptying, you know when you can collect it, the waste. And we have already successfully deployed in Europe, different cities in Northern Europe, also in Stockholm and Dubai in the Far East. And we are now expanding to Southeast Asia as well, where the need is big. The biggest growth market will be in Asia and we want to set up a pilot project in Singapore or nearby countries for some 100 units. And that's why we investors and partners for the phase two engagement, like in Singapore, robotics, existing FinBeat smart system to get more data, get more knowledge, how the waste is created in urban environment. If you need to contact us, please contact me, Marco Okasing, my colleague in Singapore, and we are ready for collaboration for the governments, universities, companies, creating the value chain for the collected materials. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Our next presenter is from Nolventure. He is Robert Connell. My name is Rob Connell and I'm delighted today to speak to you about Nolventure. And at the heart of Nolventure is our base and indeed a very wonderful diverse team. And we have two showcases to so show today. One is in EdTech and one is in smart capacity planning, smart city capacity planning. So first of all, with EdTech, why are we even addressing this area? Well, we know that there are over 600 million students worldwide who are not equipped for the modern world. There are 260 million children who are out of school across the world. And we also have more than 50% of children who do not have the required reading and writing skills. So this is what we are looking to address. Now, Noventure have created this solution and it will be given out for free during this COVID-19 times. And this is for both schools, teachers and the pupils. It's a very easy to use digital solution based on learning in both the classroom and remotely online, which is becoming more and more prevalent. It's an all-in-one platform for digitization of content and it's engaging and rewarding for the students. And now we're seeking partners in the Southeast Asia region to help us go to market and to co-innovate. So here's an example of a simple exercise where you can learn coins. And from these coins, the students get rewarded by playing in a virtual world game with their own avatar. This means that we are addressing the pain points that the teachers don't have a single platform that meets all of their needs. They're really pushed for time. So here they can create content very quickly. They can quickly assess students' progress, get examination results, etc., or exercise results. And the students themselves get to work in a modern, uh, fun, social, interactive uh, manner. This can also be used across both desktop and mobile devices. And importantly, so that we are enabling all of the world to be able to use this solution, it can work both online and offline. It's been well proven use in Finland and we have pedagogical experts here who are testing this and we're currently going for an independent certification body as well. So moving on to the next example, 
anticipatory planning capacity management of city services. Now, this is where Null Venture is actually supporting another company. Indeed, the company is called Lockyer. It's a strategic partner of Null Venture. Again, we have utilized the base. And to recap, the base is open source microservices, very low barriers to get started, but very highly scalable solution. So we use uh, certain programming languages and frameworks, and indeed modern DevOps and project management and how we work with our clients. So we have a unified dashboard that can be used to take all of the data out of different silos for the city planning. It can be used for things like uh, BTIC business to government applications like daycare, schools, healthcare clinics, and nursing homes. But it can also be used in business to business. So that's hotels, restaurants, retail, for example. And that's very simple to implement. It's a software as a service, it's a fixed monthly fee. So why bother? Quite frankly, the city of Helsinki is a wonderful case study for us. And this is something that can be duplicated across the world. So in daycare services alone, they've seen multi-million savings. Now, if we look at Singapore, we have similar opportunities. There are 2,500 early childhood development centers in Singapore alone. And we can be looking at greater efficiencies in terms of buildings, in terms of uh, planning, in terms of occupancy, in terms of the quality of the services. And this also acts as a platform to integrate other things such as the air quality. We look at other opportunities. We have an aging population across the world. And in Singapore, we have elderly care industry that has rehabilitation centers, dementia daycare centers, psychiatric daycare centers, and even rehabilitation homes. Again, this is something that capacity can help with. And then a last example here is more the business to business side, which is the hospitality industry, where we have 410 hotels. And again, this is not just for the hotels and occupancy rates, etc., but it's also things like the, the restaurants uh, as well. So thank you very much. If you'd like to learn more about Null Venture and Lockyer and the EdTech Play, feel free to contact me and we can see how we can co-innovate and go to market together. Thank you, Robert. Our second last presenter is Paul Christian Levi from Nornir. Hello, my name is Paul Christian Levi. I'm the founder and CEO of the deep tech company Nornir. And today I'm going to talk about uh, new tools for the new internet. Uh, we have been researched and developed uh, a new web technology. And we are launching new tools for developers to be able to develop and explore this new web. The thing is, with the new web, we call it the real-time web, uh, is basically a new internet uh, where you can link IoT objects and physical objects together. If you know about the World Wide Web, you know the, the existing web, you have something called hyperlink, where you can link picture, text, and, and videos together between web pages. And we can do exactly the same now with our new technology where we can link IoT object like sensors inside, you know, our refrigerator, our oven, and, and, and you know, elevator, a bicycle, any object that becomes intelligent with a sensor inside can become linkable online using uh, our technology. And the concept of linking the physical world together like this, that is what we're calling the real-time web and Internet 5.0. Um, and there are many benefits doing real-time web compared to a worldwide web. And that is, um, you don't have to program interface anymore. Today, when you want to communicate from an object to, to another service, you have to program an interface. And this is something you don't need to when you're using real-time web uh, linking technology. And um, if, when you look at our developers starting to use our technology, they save a lot of cost and money uh, using uh, linking technology when they develop uh, new solutions for IoT mm -hmm. and AI and so, mm -hmm. so forth. 
So um, if you compare real-time web with like blockchain and cloud, uh, real-time web is a heterogeneous network, like the worldwide web is a heterogeneous network, meaning that nobody, no one owns the network. The networks are self-scaling. You become part of the network when, when you set up a domain, but you don't, you don't need to kind of recruit people to the network because you become part of it when you buy a domain or, or, or set up a domain. Uh, when you look at blockchain and cloud technology, those technologies more that you need to be part of the network and they need to recruit you to that network to become part of that network. So it's more like a closed network in a sense. Um, so real-time web is a self-scaling web network. You become part of it. You can set up your AI or IoT solutions and you can interlink data with other domain owners. That is the beauty of the real-time web. And we're actually launching the first world's first developer kit for the real-time web. This is a kit built around ESP module. Uh, and um, when you set up this kit, you can start developing solutions for the real-time web and the real-time web uh, ecosystem. And this is our, our the first kit that we are uh, launching now in November and December and will be ready for purchased uh, online from a Trura's shop. We also uh, deliver infrastructure for, for smart cities. We call it the Sings Hive. This product is mainly uh, for setting up the physical infrastructure for IoT. So we're supporting Dash 7, LoRa, Wi-Fi, Narrowband IoT, disruptive technology, and we can support any new technology and IoT technology that will come in the future. Because like any service that you are creating, you can set up a service for the gateways and the connectivity, and that becomes part of the network as well. So anyone can join in on the ecosystem of real-time web, and you will have like a um, ecosystem where people can innovate and create new IoT services um, to a less cost, and much faster than before and it's an opportunity for all developers out there to create new business in this new market so that's all for me now uh, if you interested more in this technology please contact me i will be in a no near stand thank you paul our final presenter for this segment is Yang Luo from Kupa. Hello everyone, my name is Yang Luo. I'm a regional manager of Kupa, leading sales and product development. Welcome to the presentation. I'm going to talk about driving the digital transformation using location technologies. Imagine the world 10 years from now. Apparently, it will be significantly different. In the past 20 years, we have seen the world changing into a connected world. Think about the idea of IoT. The devices out there are connected, able to sense the environment and share the data with you real time. The connectivity and data are important, but the location information is as important as the data itself. For example, in a factory or building where alarm goes off, it's important that an alarm will expose the data, but it's equally crucial to know where the alarm is happening. So the content, which is data, becomes relevant when it's married with the context, which is location. Location is one of the fundamental building blocks for enabling the uh, concepts such as smart manufacturing, smart uh, buildings. We believe the world will be moving towards uh, a direction that the location will become as common as getting access to data today. Similar to the Wi-Fi for the connectivity, location technology will become uh, available everywhere and everyone will demand access to location-based services. In the world of tomorrow, positioning will become ubiquitous and a globally adopted concept, whether you are indoors or outdoors. And all the devices will be connected and location aware. Ultimately, we re-envision the future as a location-enabled and device-connected world. Gupa is at the core of bridging data with location information. 
We provide an intelligent locating system for our partners. We have been working with Bluetooth technologies for many years, but we are using direction finding methodologies, which is different from a lot of other Bluetooth solutions. We use locators to measure the angle of arrival of a signal transmitted by a tag by using advanced algorithms to compute the tag's compute, uh, position. Uh, it allows us to deliver sub-meter accuracy in real time. And the versatility of our technology allows our partners to make relevant use of the location data and solve different business applications. For example, in factories to predict maintenance and uh, eliminate the bottlenecks, and in warehouses to improve process and operational efficiency. Our solution is scalable as well, and we are able to track tens of thousands of tags in millions of square meters areas. Last but not least is open. The use of Bluetooth technology allows us to have a wide variety of Bluetooth-enabled devices that we are tracking. In this case, we are just a technology component that delivers accuracy and our partners take their expertise in different vertical markets to make use of the location data that our technologies offers. Here to give you some examples of which vertical market we are uh, operates. Uh, what is important here is that Hoopa is a horizontal platform that uh, for each vertical of, uh, for each of the vertical markets, we enable a variety of use cases at the same time with the same infrastructure. A bit about us. Wuba was founded in 2012, spin-off from Nokia Research Center. But the founding team has developed the technology since 2005. And we are based in Finland and have presence globally. Being in the market for many years, we have received a strong reputation as a leading location technology provider among analysts such as Gartner. We have worked with all the stakeholders in the value chain from the Bluetooth standardization body, semiconductor vendors, and to channel partners and, and end customers. Here in Singapore, we have uh, Medicis Innovation and the Cloud Plus. Um, if you're looking for a turnkey solution in healthcare and logistic, industries, please feel free to talk to them. It has been a journey for Gupa, but our beliefs have not changed. We believe in the future there will be connected devices and all of the devices will be location aware. So we truly hope uh, to work together with you to build the future. So join us on our journey. Thank you very much. A big thank you to all our presenters. We have now come to the end of day two of Tech Innovation 2020. I hope you enjoyed today's sessions. Here are some admin notes. The QR code for a post-webinar survey on day two of Tech Innovation 2020 will be shown on screen shortly. We look forward to receiving your feedback. The webinar live stream will open at 9.45 a.m. Singapore time tomorrow. We will feature two plenary sessions about sustainability and smart livable cities, a design runway and design think tank. IPI's partners, IP Hatch and Delta Tech Korea will also be hosting their segments tomorrow. If you'd like to meet any speaker who have presented today, please visit the Tech Innovation portal at techinnovation.com.sg to arrange for a virtual one-to-one -one meetings before the 18th of December. Thank you once again for participating in day two of Tech Innovation 2020. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow.